Shox have a new, more advanced headphone on the market that promises even better sound quality and overall performance than the previous Open Run Pros. I've been lucky enough to get my hands on a pair of the new Open Run Pro 2, but also I'm going to be comparing them to the old model to see what's new and whether the new features are noticeable enough. So full transparency, Shox did reach out to me and ask me to test these two headphones and they've sent me these two models to try out. I genuinely think this is a comparison that a lot of you would be interested in, especially if you train in a gym or if you cycle or if you go running outdoors. My main focus is to see whether there's a significant difference in performance between these two headphones from Shox and not only that, how big of a difference are we talking? For the record, I've actually never tried any bone conduction headphones from Shox or any brand before, so this will be an interesting experience for me. If you don't know what it is, let me explain a little bit about how bone conduction headphones work. They're headphones that operate a little differently from a traditional headphone. Instead of transmitting sound through the air into your ear canal, bone conduction headphones send vibrations directly through your skull to the cochlea, the part of your inner ear responsible for hearing. Now the Open Run Pro first generation, these primarily used bone conduction technology. They were designed to sit on your ears comfortably while still enabling you to have situational awareness, like hearing sounds of traffic and other things going on around you. However, the problem that many had with the previous model is that when the volume was turned all the way up, it can cause vibration and mild discomfort. So with the newer second generation of the Open Run Pro, they use something called dual pitch technology, which combines the benefit of bone conduction and also air conduction which should in theory significantly improve the sound quality while also minimizing the vibration that a lot of users complained about with the previous model. So are the new Open Run Pro 2 a solid option? Let's find out. Now I want to see if the new features are majorly noticeable in the new Open Run Pro 2. I think sometimes with the new release of any product there isn't actually that much different in the newer version for there to be any real point in buying it. Sometimes you can get the older model and still have a good experience and of course save a bit of money. So with this newer model you get everything you'd expect, a nice carry case quite hard and durable but the first thing I've noticed compared to the older version is that charger. With the newer Open Run Pro 2 I noticed that it connects straight into a USB-C connection for charging. The previous model had a proprietary charger so that's handy. You don't have to worry about remembering to carry an extra cable. USB-C cables are pretty much everywhere now. Before we go a little bit deeper and actually try these on let's look at who would benefit from a headphone like these. Open headphones like these aren't really like your regular headphones or earbuds. They're special in the way that they enable you to enjoy your music without missing what's going on around you. I live in London and I've personally noticed a lot of people who run on the street wear these. I've also seen a lot of cyclists using these headphones. I think this is mainly because in these scenarios you need to be aware of traffic and possible dangers around you. That's a massive bonus. As I mentioned, they just sit on your cheekbones and they transmit the sound into your ears that way. So what's actually new? As mentioned, the new model's biggest feature is something called dual pitch technology, which is basically about the combination of bone conduction and air conduction in one headphone. I've never heard of it before, but I understand it's a new technology and it's supposed to give you much better sound quality and noticeably less vibration. That's probably the feature I'm most interested in experiencing. The older Open Run Pros, the, or the first generation, a lot of people mentioned that the vibration on that version was really bad. So I'm expecting this dual pitch technology should have addressed that. The new model have the same shape and form factor as the previous model, but I think this new upgrade is a lot more about what's inside and the comfort levels of wearing them for a long time. If you have the older model yourself and you're considering an upgrade, this will be very useful to you. So how did I test them? In order to test the sound quality, I listened to the same three songs in different scenarios with each headphone. It sounds tedious, I know, but for me, it's the best way to really see the difference. Also, I listen to podcasts a lot, and for me, any headphone I intend to wear needs to be good with spoken words too. You'd think that this is something simple, but some headphone manufacturers don't get it right. I did all of this to get a fair idea of what the difference in sound quality would be like. I took them out running, both on the road and on the track, to see how they dealt with outside noises. I also trained in a gym with them, in a space that's most likely to already have some louder music playing. Would they be able to perform well in those scenarios, or would they fail miserably? I I also made sure that when I trained in them, I did my typical test to see if they stayed in position. I often have my head laying horizontal and sometimes upside down when I train. I hate when my headphones don't stay in position. So let me tell you about my findings. As I mentioned, this is my first time trying Shox headphones, so in terms of sound quality, I didn't fully know what to expect, but the difference between the two was noticeable from the get-go. Both of these headphones look very similar and their button placement is pretty much identical. So using both of them, switching them on, controlling your music is pretty much the same. But when you look closer, the tips of the newer Open Run Pro are slightly bigger. 
just a tiny bit. My assumption here is that there's a little bit more going on underneath to fix the obvious problem that was apparent in the first generation Open Run Pros. If you own or have ever used the older Open Run Pros first generation, you might already know this, but when I first tried them on and listened to music, I was surprised at the difference. The very first thing I noticed, and you might know about this as well, is that they vibrate a lot, so much to the point where it actually affects the comfort levels of the headphones. Let me explain a little bit more. This vibration creates a lot of distortion in the sound, so my music lost a lot of clarity you can literally feel the vibration in your hand before you've even put them on. I personally didn't enjoy this amount of vibration. Definitely not to the point where it makes the side of my head tingle or feel irritated while I'm working out. And some of my favorite songs just didn't sound right. Kind of distorted and messy. If sound quality is important to you, this would probably bother you. This is definitely down to the fact that as I mentioned earlier, this first generation only utilizes bone conduction technology. When I first tried the newer model, I noted that there was very little of that intrusive vibration. Music at the same volume level doesn't make the side of your head tingle, which made wearing them for longer periods of time a lot more comfortable. It's kind of like having a wasp buzzing on the side of your head, very loud vibrations. I would say that the newer Open Run Pros definitely sound a lot better, a lot more refined and comparable to an over-ear headphone than the older model. The technological improvements are very noticeable. It's just a smoother and richer sound. In the first generation Open Run Pros, I noticed the higher vibration happens mostly in moments where the sound peaks in both podcasts and music. So think about snares and bass drums and podcast moments where someone starts laughing or talks a little loudly. The vibration was just a little bit too much. In these newer ones, the vibration just didn't happen anywhere near as much. Bass heavy hip hop, which is mostly what I listen to when I work out, was a much more pleasurable experience, I will say. There's no distortion even at maximum volume and drastically there's less vibration to make the side of my head feel like it's all tingly. So that is for me an improvement in the comfort aspect. Now let me talk a little bit about working out in them. When it came to wearing them for longer periods of time, both headphones performed just fine. During my indoor workouts, I did quite a few things, bench press, handstand push-ups, and both pairs never moved out of position, so that's great. When I was running, I was slightly concerned that maybe the newer model would move around a bit, especially when my head starts to get a little bit sweaty. They do have a slightly bigger tip, and they do weigh a tiny bit more too. The older model comes in at 28 grams and the newer Open Run Pros come in at 31 grams. It's a tiny difference to be fair. They stayed put just fine. They never slipped out of position at all. But there's also another thing I noticed. When I was on the running track, the running track does get very windy and it did at some moments drown out my music when I was wearing the older model. But I noticed with the newer Open Run Pro 2, it didn't completely drown out the noise of the wind. I wouldn't really expect it to because my ears are always going to be open, but I could feel it making a difference. My music in this scenario was a lot better with the Open Run Pro 2s. So overall, the biggest thing you will notice is the sound difference without a doubt. Both are of course IP55 water resistant, so if it starts raining while you're out running or cycling, which it does a lot in London, you'll be just fine. So this is my conclusion. The most obvious thing I would say is that the first generation model vibrates a lot, and I'm actually quite surprised at how much vibration there was. After I tried the first generation Open Run Pros, I looked into it and I did notice a lot of people complained about the vibration problem. So it's good to see that they've addressed this quite comprehensively in the newer model. Even though they have the same comfortable fit that stayed in place and could be worn for a long time, that tingling from the vibration did get very annoying for me after a while of wearing them. The newer model is definitely a big improvement. All of the music I listened to on them sounded better. Definitely a richer and fuller sound, even when turned all the way up. If you've tried the Open Run Pro first generation, do drop a comment and tell me what your experience has been like, and if you're going to go for the sequel. If you want to know more about these headphones from Shock, scan the QR code here or click the link in the description. With that being said, thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next one.